All right, fractions and decimals next. A terminating decimal is a decimal that ends, and a repeating decimal is a decimal that has repeating remainders. Change the decimals to the fractions and the fractions to decimals. And you can see I've got two decimals here will change, and I've got two fractions will change. So, <clears throat> 0 0.5. If we say that number properly, it is 5 tenths because the first decimal place is tenths. Well, 5 tenths sounds an awful lot like a fraction, doesn't it? 5 tenths. And that's because it is a fraction, 5 tenths. We've just changed the decimal, the decimal to its fraction form. Now, we do have to simplify the fraction. So 5 divided by 10, meh. I can divide both of those by 5. It's really one half. Next up, we have 1.25. 1 and 25 hundredths. Second place is called the hundredths. So, 1, pardon, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> 1 and 25 hundredths. Any decimal that has a number before the decimal point will be a mixed fraction. Now the question is, is this fraction simplified? Can I walk away from it? And the answer is not yet. 25 and 100 both divide by 25. 25 divided by 25 is 1. Let me write that so it doesn't look like a V. And 100 divided by 25 is 4. So that is 1 and 1 quarter. So to change a decimal to a fraction, we just have to say the decimal using its proper name value, its name places, which we did way back in Chapter 2, Lesson 1. To change a, or a fraction into a decimal, it's just division, like I introduced you to in the last section. 3 eighths is 3 divided by 8. It's just now, we're not going to do this with remainders. We are going to put in a decimal point and add zeros. And I'm going to add three zeros only because I know that's how many we're going to need. 8 goes into 30 three times. 8 times 3 is 24. And when I subtract, I'm going to get 6. Drop the second zero. You would add that zero and then drop it if you didn't know how many you needed. 8 goes into 60 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. When I subtract those, I get a 4. We would then add this 0 and drop it down. 8 goes into 45 times, and we finally have no remainder. So 0.375 is the fraction form. For 6 and 5 eighths, the 6 I can just keep. Okay, 6 point, we just have to figure out what comes after the decimal point. We do that the same way we just did. So we're going to do 5 divided by 8. Obviously we need some more stuff here because 8 doesn't go into 5. So we put a decimal point after the 5, put it above our division bar, and start adding zeros. 8 goes into 50, uh, let's see, 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. When I subtract that, I have 2. Add in another 0 and drop it. I have to keep going until I either get no remainder or I get the remainder repeating. I get the same number over and over again. 8 goes into 20 twice. 2 times 8 is 16. That's 4. Add another 0 and drop it. 8 goes into 45 times, and that finally leaves us with no remainder. So our answer is 6.625.